we're going to be taking a look at the 8-bit king. And what the 8-bit king is, it is a retro emulation emulator or device. It plugs in to an existing HDMI port on your television. It looks almost kind of like a thumbstick in a little miniature package. Make sure you do not download pirated games and play on this. That is a no-no. Make sure that you own the games that you are playing because it is legal to play backup games, just not ones that you don't own. Okay, you pull the top off of the HDMI stick and you just simply plug it into the back of your TV. You will see right here, there's a slot for a micro SD card. It comes with a four gigabyte micro SD card. That may not sound like a lot, but for 8-bit games, that is plenty. You can add a bigger capacity micro SD card or your own brand. I'm just not sure on the exact limitation. I'm also not going to be taking this device apart and looking directly at what's under the hood. I'm not going to look at the processor or the GPU. However, on the side here, there is a micro USB to regular USB power adapter. As long as you hook this into a 5 volt power adapter, it is fine. These are the two wireless controllers that the 8-Bit King system comes with. You can see they look familiar. They look like the original Nintendo Entertainment System controllers. Underneath, you will see a switch, and this switch on each controller allows you to switch from first player or second player, so you can play two-player games with a friend or a family member. How much fun is that? Also, you will see, unlike the original Nintendo Entertainment System, this controller has four buttons. You can see that there is a battery compartment here and it is very easy to open. It just has a tab that you pull back. You will see that indeed you need two AAA batteries for each controller. And that is the complete system. I bought this off of Timu during a sale. Usually you can only get this in gray, but during this particular time, they had it in red and blue. You will see that this tiny little package can give you a history of nostalgia. But wait, just one minute. Is this system any good? First, in the user interface, you choose your language. In this case, I'm gonna choose English. And then you will see that there is Famicom, which is the NES, then there is the PC Engine, then there is Game Boy, and then Game Boy Color. Then there is a list of the ROMs, which means games, and you can check your favorite ones. And then you can also actually manually search for the game that you want to play. And this way you will not have to scroll through thousands of games just to find the game that you want to play. Now, I also suggest that you mark your favorite ones as favorite and go ahead and play those. You can also delete the ones that you're never gonna play off of the card. First up, we have Mario Brothers. This was a popular game in the 80s, in the early 80s. And as you can see in the user interface, if you push start and select at the same time, a menu will pop up that will allow you to change the screen size to original scale or to full screen. And some people like playing it in the original format, which looks like this. I myself am not a real big fan of it. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back to full screen. You can also save your progress and also click load. If you hit return, it returns you back to the main user interface. In this case, it's taking me back to the search engine and you can see some of these games may have never been released in the United States before or some of them may have Japanese uh, writing in them. But I'm sure you will recognize this game. Talking about going back to 1985. This brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. Believe it or not, I was in kindergarten when this game came out, so that kind of gives you a hint on my age. But this game never gets old, and it's always fun to play. However, I do have one gripe about the emulator here. It has input lag. Here is The Legend of Zelda, another classic. My two favorites were Mario and Zelda. As I was saying about that input lag, if you push a button, it may not register for up to half a second later. And if you're fighting things, shooting bullets, or jumping across platforms, that could be a big problem to have lag like that. You could just fall in a hole and die. That doesn't sound fun, does it? One of the other pluses about this emulator is that it still has three more systems that I have to show you. And the next one is going to be the Game Boy. Yes. Who can remember that portable black and white system of glory? And here it is. And another Zelda game, no doubt. Don't really have a whole lot of gripes on it emulating the Game Boy games. They seem to do pretty well. Uh, as with the regular Nintendo games, they may have some frame skippage here and there. Or the sound may sound a little bit off. But as for the Game Boy uh, games, it emulates those well. I'm going to show you a sample of the games on here. And... It says there's 3,300 games. So that's another reason why you may just want to search for the game you play. Delete the ones off there that you don't. Save you some time to finding the games and actually playing them. You can see there are quite a bit of games. Some of them have Japanese dialogue and captions and dubs so you may want to delete those if you don't like that sort of thing me personally I deleted them the next emulator that I'm gonna show you is the PC engine and we're gonna show you the Dark Knight Batman Uh, who doesn't like Batman? Do any of you remember this game from back in the day? Oh yes, this is a wonderful game that I think the whole family will love. And there are those games that I don't think ever existed on the regular Nintendo. That is Mortal Kombat 4 and 5. 
I, I really don't know how this is on here, but I think it looks really horrible. I'll let you guys be the judge. And then after I show you a brief play of this game, I'll give you my final thoughts. To sum the 8-bit king up, I would just like to give it a 5 out of 10 because the hardware is somewhat weak, but that's to be expected for the very cheap $15 price tag. The controllers almost feel weightless until you put those batteries in there. But on a positive note, it does feel like you could drop them a couple of times and they'll be okay. But if you're just looking to pass some time and you need something that's portable and that's somewhat accurate and that two people can play and have fun, then you can't go wrong paying $15 for this. Just don't expect the quality to be 100%. I purchased this unit for $15 from Timu. And that has been my review of the 8-Bit King. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye.